In this video, we're going to explore the padding shorthand property. And the padding shorthand, or basically padding itself as a property, is very, very useful. You probably have seen it already. We have been using it here. But now let's start to cut away all this text here, or at least this line of code, which is an estimate of 84 characters. And we can cut this away to probably only this amount of characters here that will be about, well, maybe let's say about. Uh, 25 to to 20 uh, to 30 characters max all right so let's explore how this works so basically the shorthand is exactly the same as what we did here but then we use the commands and very similar to margin so to do this let me explain here we have the padding and in this padding here right now if you would put in here how does it really work basically it indicates here in the exact same order as the margin where we have here on top and then we have right and then we have bottom and then we have left so this is here similar here we have here all of these items here in counter for well, sorry not in counter but in clockwise rotation so what we want to do here is then we have 5 15 10 and 20 we're going to use that as well here because this here you can see your top right bottom and left so what we're going to do is we're going to just put these values according to this structure in this order here so we have to make sure that this is the same sequence so padding top is the first one that we need to get so the top is five pixels and then we need the right one padding right so padding right has a value of 15 pixels so we say here 15 pixels and then we have padding bottom which has a 10 pixels a value of 10 pixels, so we say 10 pixels, and finally padding left. And in this property, padding left, we have 20 pixels, so we're going to copy here 20 pixels. So once we have that, we can comment out all of these, and I will remove this because this is not able to read. Or well, CSS cannot read that kind of text. So we save this and make sure that this is now done. And if you refresh, you will see it will not change, and you will notice that this here just maintains the same. So refresh, as you can see. And exactly the same, this, the entire div has not moved an inch. And you can see here as well, 15 or 5 for top, 15, 10, and 20. So what happened then basically if we have someone who will indicate padding 10? If you refresh here, you can see here it starts to move, padding 10. And basically what happens if we say padding 10 is that top, right, bottom and left equals 10 so basically here it would see this so it would be the top uh, right bottom and left basically what it says is this if you put in only one value it just sees them as three well four times being repeated four times but css is intelligent enough and understands this code or this shorthand code which saves you a lot of time in repeating yourself most of the time you'll be using this command where you only do it once let's say padding 10 for everywhere or maybe this is very common for buttons and and other items so let's say we have a button then you might want to have top and bottom has maybe a 5 pixel padding and left and right has a 10 pixel padding so how do we do that well basically basically we do this then and then the sequence has slightly changed so basically we say top slash bottom space and then we have left slash right basically then if you have this you want to have five pixels for top and bottom and 10 pixels for left and right so we do here five pixels and here 10 pixels save this refresh and now you can see here we have five pixels for top and bottom left and right has 10 pixels of course, you will not notice it here right now because we have the height here. So what I'm going to do is let's put in here a new class. And we say here, a, a special button. Let's say button as a class. And in here, we're going to get just the item here. And of course, I have to make sure I delete this. Maybe this will create some issues. So there you are. So that will work fine because what happens is the text here was blocking the text align here below. Because it doesn't recognize it because it's not the proper syntax so now we have here the right syntax so we let's say we have this here and we have a background color 
and you already know how to do background color and we say here variable and then we say here dash dash color one and what we can do here and you are probably also familiar with this if you've watched my other videos we say border radius where we say we give it a um, four pixel radius or rounded borders so or four pixels so not a sharp edge so once you do that and save this and then we want to make sure here we have a new button so we're going to say here button and this button will have a class of button and then we can say here confirm or any kind of text you want let's save that once we save that you refresh and you can see here oh all right it has a button here it has some borders so what we can do here probably i'm going to remove this part here save that so it goes more up here and then you can see if we can give the background color maybe a slightly brighter color painting uh color white do we have anything yes this is the one i'm going to remove this refresh and there you are see here we have this we have a nice border and we can probably solve this border as well we can give the border radius maybe a more suitable one pixel because you've already explored that one as well if you watch my other videos i covered this as well we say here border and there's a solid one pixel and then we can even use a variable color but let's give this another color or we can give it the other color whatever the other color is uh, color number two save this refresh and there we are so this is how we can do it we have now a blue color that is the color number two and this is the pinkish color you can see the border has been one and now padding and padding top and bottom are becoming more important now and it starts to look like a nice button and of course we can make it rounded button if you want a border radius of 25 percent for example so that's not that nice we can do 50 percent so it will look more rounded or else 25 pixels that's usually a nice one there you are so we have a pale design button maybe and this is really how you can do it can we do here something more while well, we can do a margin if you do a margin here with 10 pixels you will see that it will look very nice now and more centered you can see the size as well so this is basically the way how you can start to play around with everything that we've known so far so with the padding you can play around and create nice buttons and you can go very very deep and with the borders if you've seen last time we created the leaf with the padding we are starting to create buttons and with the margin you're going to make space between all kind of sites thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions regarding this make sure you put them in the comment section i'll get back to you and if you enjoy this video check out the next video here you will probably enjoy this as well